Welcome to CS211 Programming Languages. For the course description, so this course provides students with the fundamental features and concepts of different programming languages. Topics include overview of programming languages, introduction to language translation, type systems, data, and execution control, declaration and modularity, and syntax and semantics. For the course learning outcomes, describe concepts, formulate algorithms, and reasons about solution of different programming languages. Understand the programming models underlying different languages. Make informed design choices in languages supporting multiple complementary approaches. Learn new languages and programming constructs. Understand the principles underlying how programming language features are defined, composed, and implemented. Explain the use of programming languages and the appreciation of their limitations. And understand the basic knowledge of programming language translation and static program analysis as well as runtime components such as memory management. For the summative evaluation, so class standing, we have 40%, major examination, 40%, other output, 30% for a total of 100%. So introduction to concepts of programming languages. Programming languages are the languages used by developers to communicate with computers and create applications. Studying programming languages is essential for anyone interested in pursuing a career in software development, data science, artificial intelligence, and other fields that require programming skills. To begin studying programming languages, it's important to understand the basic of computer programming. So these are the five basic components of any programming language. We have variable, control structures, data structures, syntax, tools. So what do you mean by variables? So variables is a storage location and an associated symbolic name which contains some known or unknown quantity of information called value. While control structures, it is a block of programming that analyzes variables and chooses a direction in which to go based on given parameters. Data structures, particular way of storing and organizing data in a computer. Syntax, set of rules that define the combination of symbols. And last, tools, a piece of software that, when used while you code, allows you to get your program done faster. Some of the most popular programming languages include Python, Java, JavaScript, C++, Ruby, PHP, Swift, Kotlin, and many more. So resources you can use to study programming languages. So we have online courses, textbooks, tutorials, practice exercises. So learning a programming language takes time and practice, but when dedication and persistence, you can develop the skills you need to become a proficient programmer. So here are the reasons to study the concept of programming languages. First, develop problem-solving skills. Second, career opportunities. Third, understanding how software works. Fourth, developing transferable skills. Fifth, enhancing creativity programming. With regards to developing problem-solving skills, Learning programming concepts and applying them to solve problems can help you develop critical thinking and problem-solving skills. With career opportunities, so in today's digital age, programming skills are in high demand. Knowing programming concepts can open up career opportunities 
in fields such as software development, data science, web development, and many others. So understanding how software works, you'll be able to understand the code behind the software you use and even make modification to it if needed. Developing transferable skills. Programming concepts are not limited to a specific programming language. The skills you learn can be applied to other languages, making it easier to learn new languages or new programming languages and frameworks. Enhancing creativity. Programming is an art as much as it is a science, but learning programming concepts, you can create your own unique software solutions and express your creativity through code. So let us move on to the language evaluation criteria. So what are the criteria used to evaluate a language? So first we have readability, second writability, third reliability, and the fourth one is cost. If we talk about readability, the ease with which programs can be read and understood. Writability, the ease with which a language can be used to create programs in the program domain. Reliability, conformance to specifications, example performs to its specification. And of course, cost, which is the ultimate total cost. So what are the primary influences on language design? First, we have hardware architecture. Second, existing languages. Third, user needs. Fourth, paradigm. Fifth, community. So if we talk about hardware architecture, so the design of a programming language is often influenced by the hardware architecture of the computers it is intended to run on. For example, languages designed for the x86 architecture may differ from those designed for ARM processors. While existing languages, so many la programming languages are designed to improve upon existing languages by addressing their weaknesses or adding new features. So this is often referred to as language evolution. User needs. Programming languages are designed to meet the needs of their users. So for example, a language designed for scientific computing will have different features and capabilities than a language designed for web development. Paradigm. Programming languages are often classified into different paradigm such as procedural, object-oriented, or functional programming. And sometimes, we use also logic programming. So the choice paradigm can influence the design of a language. And last, we have community. The programming language community plays a significant role in language design. So many languages have been designed and developed by open source communities, which allows for collaboration and input from a diverse range of developers. What are the basic approaches to implementation? First is compilation. So here, the most important part of this compilation is a compiler, which is a program that performs this translation. So compilation, compilation is the process of translating source code into machine code, which can be directly executed by the computer. A compiler is a program that performs this translation. So the resulting executable code is typically faster and more efficient than interpreted code. Interpretation. So interpretation is the process of executing source code directly without first compiling it. An interpreter is a program that reads source code and executes it one line at a time. Interpreted code is often slower than compiled code but it can be more flexible and easier to debug. Hybrid. Hybrid approaches combine both compilation and interpretation. For example, 
just-in-time compiler may compile frequently executed code into machine code while interpreting, interpreting less frequently executed code. Virtual Machines A virtual machine is an abstraction of a physical computer that runs as if they were running on a physical machine. Programming languages that target a virtual machine such as Java Virtual Machine or the .NET Common Language Runtime or CLR are compiled into bytecode that can be executed or any machine that has a compatible virtual machine installed. Transpilation Transpilation is the process of converting code from one programming language to another. For example, Transpiler may convert code written in TypeScript to JavaScript or from CopyScript to JavaScript. Each approach has its advantages and advantages, and the choice of implementation approach depends on factors such as programming language, the target platform, and the performance requirements of the application. Okay, students, that's the end of our presentation. So next meeting, please be ready for our next topic, which is the evolution of programming languages. So see you again. God bless you. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.